Dear friends, how are you? Today I'd like to deliver the message with the title, The Steadfast Love of God. Let's read the scriptures. Romans chapter 839. No height nor depth nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. The Lord responded to our love with the truth that God is love. This we can find from an episode introduced in the book of Luke chapter 5. One day when Jesus was teaching, a group of men brought on a bed a man who was paralyzed to lay him before the Lord. But because of the crowd, they could not approach to Jesus, and so they went up on the housetop and let him down with his bed through the tilling into the meadows before Jesus. So, when Jesus saw their faith, he immediately healed the sick person. Jesus healed the man not because of his own face, but because of his friend's face. The Lord deems the faith of a community precious. The other way around, God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah because of the city, the communities were totally depraved of sins. God always put first priority on the community to individuals. So God always asks us to pursue sound and healthy community in our world, in our community, in our church. Uh, so therefore, the Lord told us, let's read Matthew chapter 18, verse 19. Again, I say to you that if two of you agree on us concerning anything that they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathering together in my name, I am there in the middle of them. So when we get together, in the Lord's name, we just form church. We just create a church. God is love. The famous British preacher, Pastor Charles Spurgeon, once visited a farmhouse in the countryside. In the yard of the farmhouse, there stood one big weather vane. At the end of the vane, arrowhead, pointing to the direction of the wind was swaying back and forth in the wind. Pastor Spurgeon was observing the scene with interest. He found the signboard was hung underneath the arrowhead. On the signboard, some letters were written. Pastor Spurgeon got closer to the vein in wondering what was written on the signboard. On it, a Bible verse was written, God is love. 
It was the verse of 1 John chapter 4, 16. Uh, Pastor Spurgeon was puzzled uh, at the uh, you know, words and asked the landlord of the farmhouse, surely you don't mean God is love, changing as the wind blow to you. The farmer answered, of course not, the exact opposite. I put the Bible verse meaning that no matter which direction the wind is blowing, God's love never changes. When we look back upon our past, past lives, there were the times when we were in prosperity, but there were also some other times when we were afflicted. However, one plain fact is that no matter when, in what situation we were, but toward us, was always with us, uh, invariably. God's love is no change, never changed. Uh, let's read the Romans chapter 8, 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to His purpose. Hallelujah. Amen. God always makes all things work together for good to us. Believe God, trust Him. As the Lord has guided our steps by now, He will continue to guide us also in the future with His unchanging love. As told uh, today's Bible verse, let's read Romans chapter 8, 39. No height, no depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. And I'd like to ask you, how do you understand God's love? Is God's love same as human's love? The love of God is agape. What is agape? Agape is love of compassion. Then what is compassion? Compassion is to love the ones weaker than I, or inferior to me. Henry Nowen once said, Compassion is to feel pain as the sufferer does. If my neighborhood, if my friend, my family suffer, I could also feel pain. That's a compassion. Why does the perfect God love the imperfect humans? God is a perfect being, but how? Why? Does our God love the imperfect humans like us? It is because of his compassion for human. Agape is therefore an attribute of God. Love is, you know, fundamental attribute of our God. On the contrary, the love of human is eros. What is eros? Eros is to long for and love the superior or more powerful person than me, than I or longing for or love the better things. Therefore, Eros is always accompanied by desire. So, Eros' love is possessive. John uh, chapter 3, uh, 16, very famous verses. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Hallelujah. Amen. God so loved the world. This verse doesn't indicate that God loves the world because He wants to possess and grab it. God's love is love of compassion, which is hesed in Hebrew. As we always see in our social life, people love someone who is wealthy, talented, powerful, well-bred. On the contrary, ones who have nothing or little tend to be isolated even from their friends. Such love is Eros. When the Lord Jesus came to the earth, He didn't come to Jerusalem first, which was the center of power, but He started His official ministry from Galilee, that was a tiny and insignificant town. He didn't make friends of the people in status quo, but of the common people, including the poor, the sick people and sinners. The cross indicates the love of God has it, and the horizontal bar indicates loving others.
and neighbors. Look up to God and worship Him, and He will wet our dry heart with the joy as rain wets the dry land, and our lives will become abundant spiritually and even materially. Do you want your life to be abundant? Worship God. Then even if our lives are like a desert, He will change them into the gardens abundant with waters. God is love. He will take care of us with His steadfast love forever. Someone offended you, or committed a sin against you, it happens, and unfortunately, it will probably happen again, as we live in a world full of sin. But we need to pass over those offenses just as God has passed over ours. We have been forgiven uh, many offenses by the innocent blood of our Messiah. How much more should we forgive? All the time. That's what God is asking us to do. God is love, and so He always forgives our faults and sin. Therefore, we also should forgive others. Uh, Luke chapter 18, 27 is reading, and He said, The things which are impossible with men are possible with God. Uh, I'd like to introduce an interesting uh, story. Uh, it was a true story. In 1940, a large and wonderful Christian family, the Rudolphs, announced the birth of their 20th baby. What a uh, huge family, 20th baby. Uh, though the baby was not expected to leave, having been born prematurely and with a polio, she defied all odds. She did leave. But by the time she was four, she had suffered a polio pneumonia and scarlet fever. This little girl was badly crippled with hardly any use of her left leg. While her brothers and sisters enjoyed running and playing outside, she was left confined to braces. Would I ever be able to run and play like the other children? She asked her parents. Honey, you only have to believe. They responded. She had a very great parent. If you believe God will make it happen. If you believe God will make it happen. And she did. Now and again she would practice walking without her braces with the aid of her siblings. On her twelfth birthday, she surprised her parents and doctors by removing her braces and walking around the doctor's office unassisted. She never wore braces again. Her next goal was to play basketball. The coach only agreed to let her play as means of getting her older sister on the team. She was given an outdated uniform, but she was allowed to walk out with the other players. One day, she approached the coach and promised him if he would give her an extra 10 minutes of coaching each day, uh, she would give him a world-class athlete. He laughed, but seeing she was serious, half-heartedly agreed. Before long, her determination paid off. She became one of the team's best players. Her team went to the state basketball championships. One of the referees noticed her exceptional ability. He asked if she had ever run track. She hadn't. He encouraged her to try it. So, after the basketball season, she went out for track. She began winning races and on the berths in the state championships. At the age of 16, she was one of the best young runners in the country. She went to the Olympics in Australia and won a bronze medal for anchoring the 400-meter relay team. Four years later, in Rome, she won the 100-meter dash the 200 meter dash and anchored the winning 400 meter relay team. All in world record time, she received the prestigious Sullivan Award as the most outstanding amateur athlete in America. This is the amazing story of Wil uh, Wilma Rudolph, an Olympic gold medalist who believed the promise of God. Dear friends, we must never allow our circumstances to dictate 
what we can accomplish or who we can become. Let's believe the promise of God for our lives and be encouraged to move forward for Him. All things are possible to them that believe. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay.